Well, hey, Marilyn, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, I'm 65 years old. I'm from Australia, Newcastle in New South Wales. Um, I was getting to an age where I was ready to retire. I needed something in my life because I'm not one just to sit at home and do nothing. I really care about people. I've done a lot of different modalities before I discovered Faster EFT. And when I came across it on YouTube, I just knew that this was something that I could learn. And it's helped me tremendously, really helped me tremendously. And then about 12 months ago, I, I was looking on YouTube at your videos and I came across the Habilitat one where you did the seminar and I just knew then that I wanted to come here and mainly because I have a son, I have four children and one of my sons is very deeply into the drugs. He had tried to give it up at one stage but as he said to me when I went and saw him, mum they're giving me drugs to give up drugs. And when I spoke to the psychiatrist, the head psychiatrist, and I said to him, are you going to give him any help? He said, oh, we're get, just giving them pills. Huh. And the moment I said, oh, it's just like a Band-Aid, my son was kicked out, huh. in a sense. And I just knew I wanted to come here to learn. Um, and since being here, it is just amazing. A lot has happened this time round. Um, which I could see the dynamics and the workings and hearing Jeff um, talk, talk to them all and discuss things with them and how they're working at it and I suppose the, the way they put things into place and if you're doing the wrong thing, the amount of chances he gives them mm -hmm. to change their lives and then to start doing the sessions with them and to see these some of them really hurting, some of them are really the emotional pain, the memories that they have, the way they try and numb themselves through the drugs and the alcohol, whatever they're doing, and it is the pain in their eyes that you see at the beginning of the session, and then after we've worked with them for two hours to see, they, they feel lighter, and you can see that in their eyes, and they've got a smile on their face, and I think it's just a joy and an honour to be able to be working with them, see mm -hmm. the growth, and it's teaching me as well. It's helping me understand my internal workings. Mm -hmm. And I had a little turn there where it brought up a bit of emotion, but the beauty of it is, is I'm amongst masters. <laughs> <laughs> and I was able to have work done, um, a little bit of work done on myself, and, and it's been a wonderful place to, to learn and to grow and I feel um, that I'd love to see something like this happen in Australia. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get my son over here um, to have the help from Habilitat and the family. Whether I do or not, that's his choice. Yeah. But it's just, I want to come back. I want to work with these people, see the growth. And there was one particular girl, the first day I arrived, I just looked at her in the sadness and the tears and she was in a really bad place. She'd only been in here a little while. And then I had the honour of working with her. And I did a first session on her. And then Alan and I did another session on her. And the transformation, it is amazing. She just came up to us this morning with a big smile on her face and how are you going? And, and she is just doing a big, big turnaround. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see that. Mm -hmm. You have seen the videos on YouTube where, mm -hmm. you know, I bring the guy in and they're sweating and they're having a severe reaction to the drug and then you see the second half where they're res responding, not mm -hmm. wanting it, rejecting it, not even being, even being disgusted by it. Mm -hmm. But between those two videos is a mass difference and that's what you have done. Absolutely. So what's happening in between there? Most people don't realize it's just not like one switch. I mean, we do a lot of work here. Mm. And I think it's, it's um, even though they have the drug problem, it's going back, going back in time, going back to the place where they made a decision, really, um, in their own mind, either to be part of it, part of society, part of that particular scene, or they wanted some way in which to numb out the pain, 
um, because their life is so horrific, what's happening within their life it, is they just don't want to face it. And I think it's the mind giving them an out. And so many of them said, you know, I, I just wanted to numb the pain. I wanted to uh, feel good inside of myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what started them off. And as we know, especially now, and working with them, you know, they have the high, they have the good feeling the first time, but then they need more and more and more until it becomes such a roller coaster. And that movement from when you first see them, to see them sweating, to see them wanting it. Once we remove that emotional trigger that's behind it, and we're also removing the other triggers throughout their life, it's not an instant thing. It's not a bang, it's over. It may take several sessions. Mm -hmm. And what amazed me too is the ones who have done the sessions prior are coming forward because they're finding it hard to deal with either the punishment or what they're having to stand out there and just stand on their mm -hmm. feet and their feet are sore and, and the mind, how it starts to um, activate and bring up the bad memories. And it's just teaching them the tools in which to use so that they can stop that process and go back and tap it out, mm -hmm. which we found most of them do. They're very good. Even had a chap the other day say, well, I was tapping every day, then I stopped. And, and now I realise when I stopped, things started getting worse again. Yep. So he's going to really work on his tapping again. So mm -hmm. it really does show that it's important. It's a lifetime tool. It's not something, it's like us breathing. It's an automatic tool that you use and you can do it silently in your head. Yep. You don't have to do it. Yeah. And, and it is something that's really working with these people. Mm -hmm. So you, here it is, you're 65 years old. Mm -hmm. You retired. I'm semi-retired. Semi-retired. Yeah. And you're taking on Faster of Tea as another career. Yes, I am. I am. Well, I am living to 100, Robert, so I've still got 35 years to go. <laughs> yeah, me too. And, I'm and going I to 125. So. Oh, well, 125. That's, that's good. But I think it's just... Um, because it's, a, it's not the sort of job where you need a, a lot of activity. It's just going out there, talking to people and helping them see and deal with their own emotions. My, my main aim and my goal is to be able to, even at 90 years old, stand on a stage and help people realise that they have choices in life and they can, in a very easy, simple method, um, remove whatever's stopping them mm -hmm. and s change their thought processes, change how they see themselves. I only let go of the belief in myself where I, I didn't believe I was good enough. I've always sabotaged myself in the past. I'd start to build myself up, then I'd sabotage it by my belief that I wasn't good enough and I was a failure. And by using the Faster EFT and working with a lot of other practitioners, which I think is the one thing I find about this as well is that it's so important that we still clear out our, our, own, our own stuff. Mm -hmm. When er anything ever comes up and you find it's pretty deep, you're not sure what it is, it's a good idea to get onto another practitioner and, and work on it. And I think that's where a lot of the other modalities fail. It's because you go in, you do the learning, and then you're out in the cold on your own trying to work it. Mm -hmm. And you're not dealing with that. You're not dealing with those things that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And when you think I had 65 years in which to develop all of these programs, all of these beliefs within me, it's not going to be knocked out in one session or two sessions. So, and no, it could. It, it could. It could. We've could, done but it. But there's... Okay, I agree that it knocks out a certain amount. Mm -hmm. But as we know, there's tentacles. Mm -hmm. So as we're going through life, the tentacles begin to wind their way up. And that is where I find it's important. Mm -hmm. I know we can knock out big stuff mm -hmm. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I think just those little tentacles that are, mm -hmm. that are down underneath, and that's where in everyday life, as we're walking through our mm -hmm. life, Definitely. we have something that triggers us, something that... I live with my 90-year-old mum. That's why I know I'm living to 100. I live with my 90-year-old mum and I love her dearly. 
And as we all know, when you're in a relationship, whether it's a mother and child or whether it's a husband and wife or a, a partnership, that there is times when you don't exactly get on. And I've noticed, and my mum's good at pulling me up, <laughs> and I've noticed a couple of times I've spoken nastily to her. I've virtually looked at her as the little girl. And then I've walked away and I've tapped on it and say, just settle down. What's this going on inside of you, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I've gone in and I'm able to apologise to my mm -hmm. mum. Mm -hmm. Because it's stirred something up. And I think this is where, you know, there is something down there, something that you've learned, something that's happened, and now you need to, to just let it out, let mm -hmm. it go. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by it. Yeah. It's a, a well, life. It's a continual life process. Yes. I mean, you and I, we can go to one of your memories that you build an identity from and we can yes. change the memory yes. and your identity will shift and change but you have many experiences like with your mom mm. or other people that will stir mm. up other pieces no doubt mm. that's how our brains work yes it's, it a, is. it's a continual life process yes. you're going to tap for the rest of your life yes absolutely and i see these young ones here you know i admire them i think they are amazing strong people who have done had a lot happen in their lives and what I've often said to them you're only in your 20s or early 30s you know here I was I was in my 60s and they haven't got mm -hmm. as many built-up memories as right. what I had right. so they can let them go a lot more quickly mm -hmm. and they can work on it and continue to work on it and have a good life mm -hmm. change it around mm -hmm. so here it is you're working you know, you come from Australia. Yes. It's about a, what, 30 hour trip, or how, how, long, how long take you to get here? Oh, it's only a nine hour flight. Nine hour flight. But nine okay, good. Flight. That's not but too bad. I mean, putting the couple of hours to get from my place to yeah, the okay. airport. And so that yeah. was easy for you? Yes. So, so here it is. You come from Australia, mm -hmm. and you, you, know, you walk in a billet tat, you're working with these practitioners who are trained and mm -hmm. they're training you. How was that for you? Oh, I found it amazing. I really love learning from the different techniques that they have developed. I have learned so much. Um, and even working one-on-one -on -one with the practitioners that have come at the same level that I'm at. Mm -hmm. Because we're from different cultures, from different backgrounds, from different upbringings, we all have our own little way in which we can put it into words and how we do it and what we do. And I am just listening. I mean, there's a couple of them. I just didn't even want to say anything because I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm following through with what they're saying. So I'm taking these little gems home with mm -hmm. me where I can incorporate it into how I do things. And I believe that it's going to make me an even stronger and a more accessible practitioner in where I can get out and do more in the society and help more people. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, Robert, I'm Aboriginal. So I'm going home. I've already set up a... Um, I've had an interview with a gentleman um, in the Aborigine community. And when I go home, we're going to organise for me to do sessions or Perfect. even um, seminars within the Aboriginal community. Very so good. Um, I'm able to go back and help the Indigenous people as well as of Australia, as well as every, every other person. Perfect. So I, think, I think this is a really good, strong way in which I can put it out and yeah, that's amazing really. and he was quite interested in what I was talking about mm -hmm. so yeah that's good very mm -hmm. good and I, I, that's the whole purpose of what we're doing one you know what you're doing there's excitement here mm -hmm. I mean there's there's an instant reward when you work with somebody you can Absolutely. see the changes mm -hmm. and I mean that's what fulfills me when I do this you know and and I know it's the same for you mm -hmm. it is it exciting mm -hmm. and the good thing is is when we work there taking on faster T as another career. Yes, I am. I am. Well, I am living to 100, Robert, so I've still got 35 years to go. Yeah, me too. And, I'm and going I to think, 125. So. Oh, well, 125. That's, that's good. But I think it's just um, because it's, a, it's not the sort of job where you need a, a lot of activity. It's just going out there, talking to people and helping them see and deal with their own emotions. My, my main aim and my goal is to be able to, even at 90 years old, stand on a stage and help people realise that they have choices in life and they can 
with a very easy, simple method, um, remove whatever's stopping them mm -hmm. and s change their thought processes, change how they see themselves. I only let go of the belief in myself where I, I didn't believe I was good enough. I've always sabotaged myself in the past. I'd start to build myself up, then I'd sabotage it by my belief that I wasn't good enough and I was a failure. And by using the FAST EFT and working with a lot of other practitioners, which I think is the one thing I find about this as well, is that it's so important that we still clear out our, our, own, our own stuff. Mm -hmm. Whenever anything ever comes up and you find it's pretty deep, you're not sure what it is, it's a good idea to get onto another practitioner and, and work on it. And I think that's where a lot of the other modalities fail. It's because you go in, you do the learning, and then you're out in the cold on your own trying to work it. Mm -hmm. And you're not dealing with that. You're not dealing with those things that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And when you think, I had 65 years in which to develop all of these programs, all of these beliefs within me, it's not going to be knocked out in one session or two sessions. So, and no, it could. It, it could. It could, We've but, done there's, it. but there's... Okay, I agree that it knocks out a certain amount. Mm -hmm. But as we know, there's tentacles. Mm -hmm. So as we're going through life, the tentacles begin to wind their way up. And that is where I find it's important. Mm -hmm. I know we can knock out big stuff mm -hmm. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I think just those little tentacles that are, that mm -hmm. are down underneath, and that's where in everyday life, as we're walking through our mm -hmm. life, Definitely. we have something that triggers us, something that... I live with my 90-year-old mum. That's why I know I'm living to 100. I live with my 90-year-old mum, and I love her dearly. And as we all know, when you're in a relationship, whether it's a mother or a child, or whether it's a husband and wife, or a, a partnership, that there is times when you don't exactly get on. And I've noticed, and my mum's good at pulling me up, <laughs> and I've noticed a couple of times I've spoken nastily to her. I've virtually looked at her as the little girl. And then I've walked away, and I've tapped on it, and so I'm just settle down, what's this going on inside of you, you know, mm -hmm. and then I've gone in and I'm able to apologise to my mm -hmm. mum, mm -hmm. because it stirred something up, and I think this is where, you know, there is something down there, something that you've learned, something that's happened, and now you need to, to just let it out, mm -hmm. let it go, mm -hmm. and that's what I mean by it, yep. it's a, a life well, it's a time. continual life process, yes. I mean, you and I, we can go to one of your memories that you build an identity from, and we can yes. change the memory. Yes. And your identity will shift and change. But you have many experiences like with your mom mm. or other people that will strip mm. other pieces, no doubt. Mm. That's how our brains work. Yes, it's it a, is. It's a continual life process. Yes. You're going to tap for the rest of your life. Yes, absolutely. And I see these young ones here. You know, I admire them. I think they are amazing, strong people who have done had a lot happen in their lives. And what I've often said to them, you're only in your 20s or early 30s. You know, here I was. I was in my 60s. And they haven't got as mm -hmm. many built-up memories as right. what I have. Right. So they can let them go a lot more quickly. Mm -hmm. And they can work on it and continue to work on it and have a good life. Mm -hmm. Change it around. Mm -hmm. So here it is, you're working, you know, you come from Australia. Yes. About a, what, 30-hour trip? Or how, how, long, how long take you get here? Oh, it's only a nine-hour flight. Nine-hour flight. But nine okay, good. Flight. That's not but too bad. I mean, Putting the couple of hours to get from my place to yeah, the airport. Okay. So that was yeah. easy for you. Yes. So so here it is. You come from Australia, mm -hmm. and you you know you walk in a billet tat. You're working with these practitioners who are trained and they're training you. How was that for you? Oh, I found it amazing. I really love learning from the different techniques that they have developed. I have learned so much, um, and even working one on one with the practitioners that have come at the same level that I'm at. Mm -hmm. Because we're from different cultures, from different backgrounds, from different upbringings, we all have our own little way in which we can put it into words and how we do it and what we do. And I am just listening. I mean, there's a couple of them. I just didn't even want to say anything because I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm following through with what they're saying. So I'm taking these little gems home with mm -hmm. me where I can incorporate it into how I do things. And I believe that it's going to make me an even stronger and a more accessible practitioner and where I can get out and do more in the society and help more people. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, Robert, I'm Aboriginal, so I'm going home. I've already set up a, um, 
I've had an interview with a gentleman um, in the Aboriginal community and when I go home we're going to organise for me to do sessions or Perfect. even um, seminars within the Aboriginal community. Very so um, I'm able to go back and help the Indigenous people as well as of Australia, as well as every, every other person. Perfect. So I, mean, I think this is a really good, strong way in which I can put it out. And, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And he was quite interested in what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's good. Very yeah. good. And I, I, that's the whole purpose of what we're doing. One, you know, what you're doing, there's excitement here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's an instant reward when you work with somebody. You can Absolutely. see the changes. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's what fulfills me when I do this, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it's the same for you. Mm -hmm. It is it exciting. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is, is when we work, there's a test and retest. That means there's measurable changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just really appreciate you being here. I'm mm -hmm. glad you came. And thank you for taking it back home with you. Thank you. Yeah. I really have to thank you. You came into my life at the end of 2013. Mm. And it was the best move I ever made. Oh, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. Good job, Marilyn. Thank, thank you. you. It's exciting, isn't it? It is. I'm going to take your microphone yeah. off. Let's see here. Here. Right here. There's a test and retest. That means there's measurable changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just really appreciate you being here. I'm mm -hmm. glad you came. And thank you for taking it back home with you. Thank you. Yeah. I really have to thank you. You came into my life at the end of 2013. Mm. And it was the best move I ever made. Oh, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Very good. good job, Marilyn. Thank, thank you. you. Love